More and more people are talking about disordered eating, but you might be wondering whether your habits could be considered disordered. By the end of this video, you'll have six signs of disordered eating to watch out for. I'm Lara, the food freedom psychologist, and I can take you from chaos to calm around food to help you find your true health, but without restriction. I hope you're enjoying my videos and getting so much value from them. If you are, be sure to give this a like, click the subscribe button and hit that little bell to be notified every single time I post a new video. Before we dive in, I have a question for you. Have you ever wondered whether your eating is disordered? If so, let me know in the comments below. I also wanted to give a little trigger warning here. We are discussing disordered eating, which will touch into eating disorders. So if this conversation isn't right for you at the stage of journey that you're on, then go ahead and find another video. So what is disordered eating then? Imagine you're at work and your colleague tells you that she's cut carbs from her diet, or you've got a friend that logs all that she eats in a weight loss app, or maybe you have a friend that tells you that her early morning walks or gym sessions are a way for her to earn her breakfast. These kinds of conversations are so normalized that sometimes it's hard to work out if that kind of thing is disordered or not. Like where is the tipping point? Especially because so much of this stuff is considered quote unquote healthy. Disordered eating actually refers to irregular food or body related behaviors that are used to help someone lose weight or get healthy. But they are behaviors that haven't yet warranted an eating disorder diagnosis. So this is where disordered eating is very different to an actual eating disorder. Disordered eating is a way of describing someone's eating habits and behaviors rather than any specific diagnosis. Whereas an eating disorder fits specific criteria and that's what leads to a diagnosis of eating disorder. But since this phrase disordered eating has become more and more common, it might be hard to work out whether some of the behaviours that you're engaging in be considered disordered eating. So what I've done is I'm sharing six things considered disordered eating. So thing number one is food restriction. So this could include frequent dieting, it could be skipping meals, like skipping breakfast or skipping lunch, it could be cutting out whole food groups or avoiding certain foods like sugary foods or cutting down on calories. Thing number two is feeling out of control. There's a real feeling of being out of control around food. And this could include things like binges or a total inability to hold back, like if you're at a buffet table or you end up eating a whole box of chocolates when you're given a box of chocolates. That kind of feeling of chaos around food. Thing number three is compensation. So this is where you either restrict food or you fast or you do some hardcore exercise in order to make up for bad or naughty food that you've eaten. You might even go so far as to purge, like using laxatives. Thing number four is having rituals or very specific routines around food. And this often comes with that feeling or that desire to control. Perhaps you weigh out your portions or you only eat at certain times of day or you will never eat before a certain time or after a certain time. Perhaps you'll only eat foods that are on a very rigid plan and you'll never deviate from that plan. Thing number five is preoccupation. And this is a preoccupation with food or your body image or your weight that is actually impacting your quality of life. So maybe you weigh yourself all the time and you're constantly judging yourself by the number you see on, your, on the scales. Maybe you're constantly reading labels and calculating grams of sugar and fat in the food you eat. Maybe you'll only cook healthified versions of every single food. And thing number six is feeling guilty. That can actually also include feelings of disgust or even feeling anxious around food. You might feel quite anxious about eating in social situations, so you start to withdraw. And maybe you'll find yourself skipping or avoiding all social activities that include food. So now that I've listed all six, you might see some behaviors that you're engaging in. You might actually notice that some of the behaviors that I've listed here are behaviors that are encouraged in some fad diet. Diets. So what's the deal when we look at fad diets versus disordered eating? Basically a fad diet is something that encourages you to drastically change the way you eat in order to lose weight and it's often to do that in a really short period of time. So this might include things like fasting or removing whole food groups or having a drastic cut in calories. I mean you only have to look 
look at things like keto or paleo or intermittent fasting or Noom to recognize some of these behaviors in those dieting approaches. And by the way, I want to caveat here and say I totally understand there are certain people that need to eat in a certain way or cut out food groups for certain medical conditions or allergies. And I'm not including that in this assessment. I'm talking about when these fad diets are used for the purpose of losing weight and not based on any medical condition. And I think it's really helpful to think of it like this. There's a continuum that exists where you've got eating disorders at one end and you've got normal eating at the other. Disordered eating operates somewhere in the middle. And because it's on this continuum, you might recognize one or two of these behaviors in your eating habits, but actually it poses no risk to developing an eating disorder because it's much closer to the quote unquote normal end of the spectrum. And for some people that absolutely will never develop into a full bone eating disorder. But what happened with me is that I went from normal eating through to having one or two disordered eating behaviors then maybe like four or five and then six and seven until it developed into a full-blown eating disorder and that's the point research shows that a fairly significant portion of people who diet will end up with disordered eating and then a proportion of those people end up with a full-blown eating disorder and it's this slippery slope that I think is problematic and I also want to highlight that disordered eating can lead to both physical and mental health issues so mental health issues, eating disorders, having preoccupation with food that impacts quality of life. I've kind of mentioned them already, but like there are physical manifestations as well. So you can end up with malnutrition or low blood pressure, and then there's increased anxiety, depression, and potentially social isolation. The bottom line is, if you are preoccupied with food or your body image, or you're feeling this huge sense of guilt and anxiety around your food and eating habits, or you are routinely restricted restricting and maybe going so far as to purging, then you definitely want to consider reaching out for support. I've actually included a link below because if that's you and you want to have a quick chat to see how I can support you, then feel free to get in touch. As always, I've added some resources and some links below and I recommend a couple of books here. One is called Just Eat It and the other is called More Than a Body. Just Eat It is a great book explaining how to eat in that normal way. And More Than a Body is such a great book for helping you improve your body image. Check out these videos next for more health, food freedom, and mindset tips. And if you like my video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. And if you know anyone who would benefit from watching this video, then please do share it with your friends. Bye for now.